going to phase four. So phase four is where we're going to start creating our cluster. Yeah. So here we're going to have our server and we're going to have our client for the dojo. Uh, basically the cloud nine environment is going to be our server. And then for the client, I actually have another EC2 running in the same AWS account, the same AWS region. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to SSH into that, uh, into that box, into the EC2 instance, and we're going to configure the client there. But let's start with, with the server first. So I'm just going to set up the, the file going back to AWS. Let me do it here this time. So right click new file and I'm going to call it server.hcl. Yep. Okay. And let me open this. All right. So there is a lot of things that you can define for the server, but what we're going to be defining here is, um, well, first let's start with the log level. So log underscore level, that should be debug. So we have a lot of information and debug is uppercase like that. Oops. Let me try again. Uppercase. And you see that this is a text. This is not, this is not in Terraform syntax. So again, let me just do it here, go here and change to Terraform. So Terraform. All right. Now it's much better. So this is the, to increase the, the, the log of verbosity and now for the data directory. So the data directory for the server is where the server is going to, is going to store information about the server, about the members of the server. So the, the property is called data dir lowercase. And for this, I'm, I'm going to create, I'm going to create a, um, a folder here. So inside, let me go back one level. So that was, that's my environment. And I'm going to create a folder called nomad altogether dash server dash data. And I'm going to be using this, this folder here as my data directory. And for the data directory, you cannot use, um, you need to use absolute path. So I need to go all the way from slash home slash EC2 user since this is an Amazon Linux slash nomad dash server dash data. All right. Now we, for, for us to tell nomad that this is, this is going to be a server. There is a server blog or a server stanza rather. So server, let me define the block. And if I do, so I need to do enabled. So if I do enable, I'm, I'm saying that I want to enable these, uh, this cloud nine environment here, this EC2 needs to be a server. So enable true and then bootstrap underscore expect this, this property here, uh, bootstrap, let me make sure it is spelled correctly. Bootstrap expect. Yeah. So this is basically how many servers we're going to have in our cluster because I only have uh, one EC2 instance. That's why I'm putting one here. But if you're running nomad in production, you you're probably going to want between three or five or actually three or five. So you'd specify here three or five, depending on your, on your setup. But again, I just want one. Now, another thing is I want to be able to, to reach out to the nomad UI so I can see everything that is happening in my cluster. And to do that, I need to advertise. I need to open the cluster to, uh, to outside. Yeah. So if I advertise and I open a block and then HTTP, zero, 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 zero. That's going to allow me to, to access the, the nomad UI from, from the outside. All right. Okay. So this is it. Perfect. Let me go back now and make sure I've got everything. So starting the server. Yeah. So this is how our file should look like. Okay. So once we're done, the, we're going to start the nomad agent again, but without pseudo this time. Yeah. So we're just going to replace the, the dev flag with another flag. So let's go back here and do, so we're going to be doing nomad, nomad agent. And then we're going to be using the flag config and we're going to specify server dot HCL. 
see what's gonna happen here. No such, oh, I'm the wrong folder. Environment, there you go. If I run it again. Okay, so let's see. Oh yeah, that's because my, I, I still have my dev environment running. So let me kill this. Make sure that the port is available. Let's wait for this to finish. Okay, so the server has been shut down. Since I'm here, let me just do it here. So let's do it again. Nomad, agent, config. And then here I'm gonna specify server.hcl. Let's try again. All right, so you can see here cluster, cluster leadership acquired, etc. And if you go back to the challenge, yeah, the definition done is gonna come later, but basically what I can do here, let me see if I remember, I think it's nomad uh, server members. Yeah, so if I do nomad server member, so this is where you're gonna list all of the servers in your, in your cluster. And here we can see where you only have one, which is this one right here. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna SSH into this other EC2 instance, and we're gonna start the, the client there. So I'm gonna pull up this. So starting a client, we're gonna SSH into the EC2. So let me start another terminal, because I'm gonna need this one to run commands in the server. So I'm gonna start another terminal. And I'm gonna do ec2-user 10.0.77.99. Yes. Okay, so I'm, I'm inside my, my EC2 instance now. And let's see what we need to do. So now we're just gonna start a client and for that we need a client.hcl. So we had a server.hcl, now we're gonna do a client.hcl. So let me go back to, to here. And unfortunately I won't be able to use my, my IDE because I'm inside I'm inside the another EC2 instance. So if I create a client.hcl here, I won't be able to see it because I'm inside another EC2. So I can either create the file here and code here, use the ID, and then I'm just gonna have to do like a SCP, copy the file using SSH from the Cloud9 environment all the way to, to the server. Or what I can do is just use the good old Vim and create the, the file here. Uh, so let's go with the later approach. So Vim client.hcl. Now, let me go back to the challenge and then we're gonna be able to see what we need to define. So here it's gonna be very similar. So we, we, we have the, the log level, we have the data directory, etc. So let's do that. So I'm just gonna go insert node. So we have log underscore level and that's gonna be debug. And then we have the data directory and same way, I'm gonna have to create a directory for this. I'm just gonna specify here first and then I'm gonna create later. So slash home slash ec2 dash user slash nomad client underscore data. So that's gonna be my directory. Okay, so then we have the name of our client. So the name of our client, I can't find anything, but during the dojo I suggested um, that, that teams define this as team and then the number. So in my case, team 77. And then after that, I'm gonna specify a client. And when we run the, the command to see all of the clients in my, in, my, uh, in my cluster, that's what we're gonna be seeing, yeah? So we're gonna be seeing exactly this, this node. Before we had a server block to define a server for Nomad, but because this is gonna be a client, we have a client block. So client, and then I'm gonna open up and close here. This is gonna be a little bit different. One thing that is similar is the enabled. So I wanna make sure that this is enabled. Now, the second thing is I need to tell the client where to find my, my server, right? Where to find the Nomad server. And for this, if, if you have a very complex setup, so if, if you're running production, let's say, what you would want to have is you'd have your Nomad cluster and you would have a console cluster running beside it. And then what you do is you would use a uh, console to be able to find all the nodes. Yeah. So if you want your client to, to register in your cluster, they would go to, to console and they would find uh, the servers there. 
right? But because here it's a, a very simple setup, I don't have console at the moment. I'm just gonna specify server and I'm gonna specify the IP address of my server. The IP address is, as you can see here, so 10.0.77.125, 10.0.77.125. And the port is going to be 4647. So this is the port that the server is going to be listening on for members of the cluster. Okay, so that's the only thing I need here for, for the client. So continue here, we've got the ports. So the ports, we have HTTP. And this is just to make sure that it's another port different than what the server listens. Because this, at the end of the day, this is a nomad process and we don't want to uh, to, to listen on 4647 uh, or 4646. So I'm just gonna specify 5656 for the client. So wanna make sure that the port is completely different so we don't have any uh, any collision or anything. Okay, so this looks good. I, I hope I, don't, I didn't miss anything. One thing I need to do before I, I run this is to create the, the, the directory. So if I do make there, I'm gonna do a dash P so that way I can do kind of a recursively. So home ec2 dash user dash nomad client data. I believe that that was the one, that's the name that I chose. So nomad client data. I'm just gonna, let me do a head client HCL and nomad client data. Okay, so that should be, that should be fine. Now what I need to do, let me go back to the challenge. There is something that we need to pay attention right here. So we're gonna run the agent in that EC2 instance, but now, we're, but right now we're gonna use sudo. So for the server, we didn't use sudo, but for the client, we're gonna use sudo. And the reason why we're gonna use sudo, if you remember from the, the, the beginning of the stream, I explained that for certain drivers like Java or our exec, you're gonna need to run a sudo. And because later in the challenge, I'm gonna be running console as, as a binary, so not as a Docker, as a binary, I need to have the exec exact driver available to me. And that was, and that's the reason why I'm going to be using sudo. So I'm going to do sudo nomad agent dash config. And then I'm going to specify client dot HCL. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know what? I forgot to install nomad because this server does not have nomad. Okay. Let me go back to phase one and let me just copy this again. So link location. Yeah, this, this was on purpose because I want everyone to uh, to install Nomad from, from scratch in, in these two EC2 servers. So let me do wget, same process, so unzip, Oop, unzip with one Z. Taking a little bit, oh yeah, underscore, there you go. So I've got my binary and I'm gonna sudo move nomad to slash user slash bin. If I do nomad, I should have access to it. All right. Now I can do sudo nomad agent config client.hcl. Okay. And here at the bottom, you can see node registration complete. Let me go back to the definition of done. And we're just going to make sure that our, our node or our client register with the cluster. So to do that, oh yeah, before I do that, let me just show you the, the Nomad UI from the server because the Nomad the Nomad UI is running on the server. So I'm gonna be running curl ifconfig.co. And so this is the, the IP address for my server. And if I go on port 4646, uh, four, six, I believe, and there we go, we can see the Nomad UI, which is loading right here. So you see that there is no jobs because this is a brand new cluster. So there's nothing running right now, but at least we can we can access the UI. And if there is if there's any issue, if you need to debug something, we can come to the UI and, and see all the logs, see everything that is running. Okay, so we're able to access the Nomad UI. Now the definition of done is to run Nomad nodes status. And when we do that, we should be able to see the client. If I go here and do nomad node status, 
Yeah, so if I do Nomad node status, we can see here finally that we have our client and the client name is team77-client, which is what we always set up for, for that EC2 instance. So we, I think we're good here. And we're moving on, we're, we're ready to move on to the next phase, which is phase five.